So recently, Windows has locked down one of the main ways that people were using to create local accounts in Windows. And if you don't know, creating a local account in Windows is a personal choice that a lot of people like to make because of privacy concerns, right? When Windows 10 came out, and obviously it was the same thing with Windows 11, there's a lot of privacy concerns about telemetry, uh, data monitoring, uh, data tracking, a whole bunch of other stuff. And creating a local account made that not really existent. You didn't really have to worry too much about it because there wasn't an email that they could link all that information to and there wasn't a lot of information being passed. There's a, a good reason why Microsoft wants to stop you from being able to do this is because they want all that data. Data is one of the main forms for a lot of these companies to create marketing, to sell marketing, and a whole bunch of other things. So there are some great ways around this. And I've shown a tool in the past that I mentioned can do a lot of really great things when installing Windows. And it can really help in this particular situation, as well as a few other situations as well. So we're gonna talk about Rufus today. When I typically create a Windows installation media USB, I typically do it with Rufus. Um, in one of the previous videos that I did about reinstalling Windows, I talk about setting that USB up with Rufus instead of going through the uh, main official way of creating the boot media. And, you know, Rufus can do a whole bunch of stuff, not just Windows related, but today we're going to focus on the Windows stuff and some of the really awesome things that it can do for you in Windows is it can enable and create a local account for you. You can also do things like disable BitLocker, you can disable the TPM check, and you can also disable the secure boot check. So if you're planning on installing Windows on something that doesn't have TPM, either the hardware or the firmware level TPM, and it doesn't support secure boot, you can still install Windows 11 if you want it. So I'm gonna go through the steps on what you have to do to create your boot media using Rufus. So the first thing we're gonna to have to do is download Windows. And now there's two ways you can go about doing this. You can download it directly through Microsoft, or you can use Rufus to actually download your ISO for Windows. It'll allow you to do Windows 10, Windows 11, and I think even Windows 8. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do it through the website. Um, but Rufus is a great option as well that even has the ability to download it directly through the program or by downloading it through a browser. I'm going to show you both ways, but I'm going to show you how to download it directly from Microsoft first. So you're going to go to this page. You're going to go ahead and select Windows 11. We're going to download. We're going to select our language. We're going to confirm. And then we're going to download that. And now we can go over to Rufus. This is Rufus's website. Gives you lots of information and we'll go about this a little bit more in a bit and we're going to download 4.5 standard for x64 that one should be done pretty quickly so we're going to go ahead and launch that and we will talk about this while the windows iso downloads so if you do want to do it through rufus you can hit the down arrow here go to download hit the download button now you can choose windows 11 yep 10 8.1 and then they even have ufi shells so we're going to do windows 11 and then you would choose your release. They only have the one release here. You would choose your edition. You would then choose your language. And then you would have the option to either download it directly through the program or downloading it through the browser. And you're gonna choose x64. There's almost no 32-bit computers anymore. So x64 is the way to go. And then you go ahead and download it that way. But we already have it downloading it through the browser. So we're just gonna let that thing do its thing and we will come back to this once it's done. All right, so our ISO is finished. So next up, you're gonna need a USB with at least, I believe five gigs of space on it. Um, this is well over that, it's 128 gigs. The faster the USB, the faster your installation process is gonna be, so keep that in mind. Go ahead and plug that in. Now, once we do that, our disk is gonna show up here. If it doesn't hit the drop down, select the right disk. We're gonna go ahead and select our ISO. We're gonna open that one up. Then we're gonna have a few options to go through here. For the image option, we're gonna leave it to the standard Windows installation. Windows to go is another version of things. You can take a look on the internet as to what that means, but we're just gonna do a standard installation. We're gonna leave the partition scheme as GPT. That is the more modern version of partitions. It's required for drives over two terabytes. It allows more partitions, a whole bunch of stuff like that. So keep that like that. We're gonna leave UEFI non-CSM. We're going to leave everything else blank here. You can change your volume label. So if you want, you can call this like Windows 11 boot. If you wanted to, we're going to leave the file system. We're going to leave the cluster size. 
all of that kind of stuff. And then we're gonna go ahead and press start. Now start is where the good options come up here. So we can customize the installation. So we can remove the requirement for the RAM, secure boot and TPM requirements. So that's awesome. You can also remove the requirement for an online Microsoft account. This is what we're gonna to wanna to have checked. And then I also suggest if you do have that checked, you also create a local account and create a username for that. This is just gonna speed up the whole process. It's gonna make sure that there's no issues or anything that happens. And I always suggest you do this. If you're gonna be keeping this USB as a backup for when helping other people, create a local account with the username admin or something. But if this is gonna be one that you're gonna use yourself, create one with your name, it's the best way to go about it. Now there's also options here to set the regional options the same as the current user that you're creating this boot media with. You can disable all data collection and you can disable the BitLocker requirements that I mentioned earlier. Um, at this point, you would just go ahead and press OK. It's gonna tell you it's gonna wipe everything on the USB disk. You're gonna press OK, and it's gonna go ahead and start the whole process. Then you would go ahead and just do your normal Windows 11 installation or Windows installation processes. And I do go over that in another video if you do wanna go ahead and check that out. I do have a video where I talk about the preparation process for doing a fresh Windows install or reinstallation. So I do suggest you check that out. And then I also have a video talking about things to do after installing Windows or setting up a new PC. Um, and that includes things like what one of those options were was to disable all of the data privacy concern uh, settings within Windows. I use a few tools. Using Rufus is a good first step but I would still go ahead and use those other tools as well that I do talk about in that video. I will leave links to both of those videos in the description and they'll be up here somewhere as well. And that's it. Rufus really does make this a super simple and easy process. It is a great tool. The creator of Rufus and everybody else that's contributed to it are fantastic. I am so glad that people like this are out there. They're doing a lot of great things and it's great for the average consumer to fight against all of this data collection and privacy concerns that a lot of these big companies are constantly pushing on us all the time. And especially with Windows constantly moving more and more towards all of these personalized ads, having your data not being shared makes those ads one, a lot less useful. And two, a lot of the times you can make it so they don't even pop up on your computer. So do keep that in mind as well. With all that said though, I do hope this video helped you out. And if it did, I'd really appreciate it if you like subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, leave those down in the comment section below. If you need some more in-depth help with any part of this process or just installing Windows or resetting up Windows, going to my Discord and making a post in the help desk is the best way to do that. The comment section of YouTube is not a great place to get help, so do keep that one in mind. Big thanks to all my Patreon sponsors and thank you for watching to the end of this video. If you do want to see those other videos or any other videos where I talk about setting up a new PC or anything relating to reinstallation of Windows, you can check out the playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.